What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy podcast. As always, I'm your coach and host, Josh, here with his co host and co coach, KG, and I'm in the house. And it's Motivation Monday, so get fired up because we're going to share some of our favorite quotes, share what's been on our mind, as well as answer your questions. We've got three killer questions today. We're going to be going over some low calorie comfort foods, how to find your body fat percentage, and what we believe the hardest part of the fitness journey is. So buckle up and let's kick this off with coach kg's quote what do you got kg and my quote for this week is life is all about choices stop blaming the lack of opportunity and if you're watching this on youtube you can see a little snippet on the screen and there's a bunch of different examples that uh, i've come across where for example when you go to buy healthy groceries for a hundred dollars some people may say oh that's too much you know eating too healthy is way too expensive but then you go out for dinner and dessert for a hundred dollars no problem i'll do that in a second you know when it comes to watching netflix it's very easy to say you know what give me one more episode one more episode, give me more. But when it comes to getting one hour workout in, which is 4% of your day, you say you have no time, right? So the moral of the story is that I truly believe whatever it is that you prioritize and whatever that you value, you'll make happen. Even just when it comes down to it, getting to bed on time, it's easy to say, oh, I'm too busy. I can't do that. But then when it comes to scrolling social media, you know, you can do it for another hour, right? So long story short is there's always an opportunity. You just have to make it. It's something I'm very passionate about. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you today. I love what Kyle had to share there. And I'm going to add on to that with my quote, which is you can choose your heart. So life is all about choices. We make a ridiculous amount of choices. I was just reading a book and the author had mentioned how if we actually log all the choices we had to make, he was doing just that. And by 2 p.m. he had 300 choices he had to make. For instance, when you wake up, what kind of clothes do you want to wear? Do you want to go on a walk or not? Are you going to look at your phone or no? Are you going to actually do some work? Or are you going to do something else? What flavor of coffee do you want? You get the point. We're making all these choices all the time. And in our life, we can make choices that can either be positive or negative. And those small choices we make day in or day out can either make our life easier or harder. So all the time, Coach Kyle's mentioned before, being overweight is hard. Being unsure of where you are in your fitness and your health is hard. Being sick is hard. And at the end of the day, I'd rather choose a heart and embrace a heart I can be comfortable with and overcome. Like eating healthy, of course I want to eat just other random stuff, but eating healthy I know is going to make me feel better. I'm going to learn to love it. It's going to go a long way. Getting in the gym is hard. Getting in there sweating, toiling, it isn't easy, but I know that's going to get me in a great place. My morning walk, a lot of times I just want to sit down, relax, but getting out there always makes me feel better. And in life, if you can challenge that flinch and you can challenge yourself to choose that hard thing and to jump into good challenge it's going to make you stronger and help you grow even i just completed a 30-day cold shower challenge which we'll be uploading to our youtube and every single day i had to fight that flinch of hopping in that cold water and my body wanted to seize up and myself not wanting to get in there but as i became more comfortable with it i found it just got easier and easier and you can relate that to anything whether it's listening to really good podcasts instead of music or going to the gym or choosing that healthy option getting to bed on time, not watching that Netflix like Kyle said. So next time you're in a little bit of pickle, say you're choosing your heart because you're going to make your life easier. You're going to put yourself in a better position and it makes it more enjoyable than just you seeing something you need to suffer through. I love that. And like, it's just, it really got me thinking about how just every single thing that we do is really a choice. And there will be some people who say, I have no choice. And you know, just that's the way my life is. But I'd like to question that. And even when it comes down to it, like you can make these great choices that propel you forward. You can make like mediocre choices, which kind of just get you by, or you can do just make horrible choices, which just really affect you. And A lot of people will ask us specific questions, especially as we've had lots of friends and stuff and family come by for two months. And we've just been meeting up with all these amazing people in Florida. The last specific questions, even someone will say to Josh, like, man, like, how do you, how do you get that physique? Like, you know, they've been seeing the photos that he's been posting and stuff like that. And all of it came down to the choices, like saying no to these specific things, saying yes to those walks and to hitting his macros for two straight months while he was here. That was a choice, believe it or not. And a lot of people don't realize that. Even for our podcast, when it comes down to it, we do have the choice every single Wednesday when we film these, whether we're going to do it or not. It's not even a question, right? And I just think that's where a lot of people struggle is that choice that they choose is either getting them by or it's just hurting them. And that's what our main focus here is every single day to make the right choices to compound and even just to build the discipline. A lot of people don't realize that every time, like Josh said, that morning walk, you know, not hitting the snooze button. Like if you consistently compound the right choices over time, you're going to be unstoppable. You're going to be someone that people look at and they're like, holy, that person is insane. Like, I don't know how they do it, but it takes time. It takes practice and it takes consistency, but that's something we're focused on for sure. 
And I've said it before, you should be your greatest cheerleader, your biggest motivator, but too often than not, we'll use ourselves as excuses or we'll drag ourselves down with a, a weekend minds, a weekend mindset and a weekend mindset, I guess, if you have the attitude of just splurging on the weekends. But at the end of the day, being strong in those decisions is a muscle, it takes time and you need to really overcome your own excuses. I really, something I love recently, Coach Armando shared it with us. He said, imagine having to sit your children down and tell them they're the reason why you're not in shape or you're not healthy. Like we wouldn't do that. That'd be ridiculous. That'd be so unfair. But when people in their mind say, oh, I used to be fit, but then I had kids, they're holding themselves back. And that's not to say kids are gonna make things any easier, it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be way harder, you're gonna have to navigate, you're gonna have to wake up earlier, you're gonna have to maybe take them out on walks in the morning, you're gonna have to have them in the gym and have them sitting there while you're working out and maybe feed them multiple times during the workout. And it's not fair, but life isn't fair. And everyone has these things, whether you have a disability of some sort that hinders your ability to get progress like a normal person, worse genetics, worse opportunity, lack of finances. There's so much out there and it's not a game of just like i'm not saying that these things don't matter because they do but you got to be really real with where you are in life some of us get dealt harder cards than others and at the end of the day it's about coming through that i mentioned before the girl at the gym who only has one arm who's out there crushing it she's benching with her one arm just in the gym getting after it how easy would it be for her to say i don't need to go to the gym i have this disability it doesn't make sense i'm going to be lopsided in my training heck with this this is pointless i'm just going to do whatever i want no she's out there getting after it and i really try to use that as motivation for me too. I'm able-bodied. I have a lot of advantages in life. I have a lot of things going my way. And it's really easy to get in your own head when something doesn't go your way, you have challenge. But when you can overcome that and you can get past that, it's amazing how powerful that can be. And like I said, when you have the attitude, it just goes such a long way. So that is something I was really passionate about that I wanted to share and just that ability to overcome any obstacle that's in your way, a promotion at work that requires more time in the office, a change of your sleep situation. The case in point, it goes on forever. And at the end of the day, if you can smash through that, I always say obstacle is the way because it is, you will be unstoppable. Yeah, I love that. And we haven't talked about it in a while, but something I just got thinking about while Josh was talking there is like, if you can go at life with a mindset of like, it's all on you, like you're the person who can make the change, you're the person who accepts responsibility and it's very hard. And I remember I used to put blame on different situations, different people, and this was years and years ago, but when we heard from a, a great author, uh, Grant Cardone, he was talking about um, things don't happen to you, they happen because of you. That was the biggest game changer. I'm like, no matter what, if I miss a workout because something else happened here, yeah, it may you know, be a bit of their fault at the end of the day, but I try not to think about that. I'm like, it's on me, what could I do different? And when you look at a situation like that, like you don't do any good by trying to look at what other people could do better and just trying to put the blame on them. It's like, when you think of what I can do personally in this moment to make this change, to fix it going forward, you're actually going to learn something. That's where you're going to be able to grow. So it's all on you. Look at it. No matter what, you can blame your kid. You can blame your boss. You can blame your significant other, but at the end of the day, it's all on you. And that's a harsh reality for a lot of people. It was very hard for me to accept years ago, but I realized, Hey, this accident that took place, like whatever it is, like, let me look at it from a different lens and you will once again, and become a beast. So that's the last thing I want to say here. Uh, ownership is incredibly hard, but ownership is very powerful. Even one of my clients was so upset, obviously, to find out that she had cancer. And like, that's something I will never understand. I won't understand the pain, the trauma, the the uncertainty that comes with that. But I loved her just resiliency and her attitude that she's going to beat it. She's going to get through it. She's going to get back to training more than ever. And it's not fair to have these things happen to you, to have loss, to have things pop up, but what we can control is how we respond to it. And I find by having ownership of these things, it's very freeing because it is so hard and it's easy to compare and say, well, if I had this situation, I could do this better. But at the end of the day, we got to do the best of what we have. And that's something we're really passionate about. And obviously there's a lot of things we can control to make our life easier. Like people always say the harder you work, the luckier you get, but some things are so out of your control. But I do find working on this mindset and strengthening yourself and strengthening your resolve will make you more equipped to deal with the challenges that come your way. And no one likes a blame or no one likes someone who's always pointing fingers who when, and like Kyle said, the more you can take personal ownership for things that aren't even your fault, it goes such a long way. Like when someone cuts you off and you get mad at them, you can say, well, I didn't need to get mad at them. I could have just kept driving and tried to forget about it. And I know that's hard to do. I still struggle with it, but trying to do that, you'll find you get better and better and you'll just improve in general in life. So that's something we're really passionate about. I'm glad we bridged into that. And that's why we love the free form Monday content because it's fun to 
just get into what's on our mind. And these are tools that have helped us immensely in our lives. And we hope they help you as well. Anything else you want to add for thoughts, Kyle? Yeah, just one last thing. Uh, I finished up a 30 day, 30 minute journaling challenge, which was pretty cool. When I first said that I was going to get back into it, I was like, oh, I'll journal every day. Josh was like, why not make it more intense? Like something that's, you know, worth, worth kind of talking about, right? Like journaling is, is definitely fun, but you know, doing it for two minutes would be different. But I decided 30 minutes every day, set the timer. I didn't mess up at all. And it was, it was great. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because, um, I learned a lot and it's, we will make a YouTube video on it, so it'll be coming out very soon, but you guys will get you know, the first little snippets and some things going on that, uh, that really helped me out. But uh, yeah, so basically I did about 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes around uh, lunchtime or the afternoon, and 10 minutes before bed. The first uh, you know, 10 minutes was just about writing down my goals, um, what was on my mind, three things I was grateful for, as well as three things I'm looking forward to. Lunchtime, I have a book that I got for Christmas, which is 365 questions, which is just a self-discovery journal. So I just answer one or two of those questions about past experiences, life, you know, goals, like whatever it is that they ask. There's a lot of cool, diverse things. And then before bed, I would just write down three things I'm looking forward to, um, or sorry, three th three wins within the day, and then three wins I want to accomplish tomorrow. So I just want to share that with you. I know a lot of people want to journal, a lot of people struggle with it, but it's been really cool because I wanted to incorporate it for the rest of my life, and I'm excited to keep doing that. So I just wanted to share that little experience with you guys. Be on the lookout for the YouTube video, just like Josh's cold shower thing as well. Yeah, and one one last thing I want to say about the excuses is there's no nobility and champion your excuses. And it's something I want to touch on once again, because it's such a big thing to me. I remember all through my life when we were teenagers, people used to say, that's great that you really fit when you're teenagers, wait till life gets real and you get a real job and all these things. And here we are still after it. And then I remember people used to say, life's e working out's easy in high school, wait till you're in university. Then I finished university, got my degree. And then people said, wait till you're busy doing whatever. And then of course that's the thing. And well, like I said, everyone has something that's really hard, crazy work, whatever it is. I totally understand that. And even like, it's so easy. People will say, wait till you get like a puppy. I can't work out or something. And then you get a puppy and you navigate it. As long as you have the attitude that you can overcome it and you're flexible and you understand things take time, it goes such a long way. Just if you catch yourself using something as your excuse, it's good to call yourself out on it because at the end of the day, you're not helping yourself. You're just enabling yourself to believe that that's why you can't get to where you want to be. But when you challenge that mindset, it's hard because you have to take that ownership. You have to adjust. Maybe you have to work harder. You have to get up earlier. You have to be more dedicated, but it will lead to more of that freedom. So I just want to touch on that once more because I'm so passionate and that's something I've used to navigate every stage of my life. There's still a lot of adversities and challenges and life experiences I haven't had yet that I'm sure will be very hard, but I know with the correct attitude, I'll be able to come through them and have success. And something that's exciting too, is I have a seven month old. I haven't really posted him much or I don't like to say too much of it because I want him to be able to decide if he wants to be on social media and stuff. But for me, like having a child, I was like, if I'm having a kid, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. I'm not going to let him hold that burden of mine. And instead I said, I'm going to work harder than ever. I'm going to get up earlier. I'll baby carry him in the morning so I can take him out and be good to go. I'm going to be in the gym when I can. I'm going to get done as much as I can make the most out of intense training. I'm going to eat better than ever. I'm going to understand that my sleep is going to suck, but I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to roll with the punches. And I know someone will say, well, wait till you have two or three or a teen or whatever it is. But case in point, I just want to say this is something I've really executed a lot in my life. And I really want to help a lot of people by saying this so that they can understand they can solve success. And I can say I'm more fit than I've ever been before. I have more barriers and more obstacles and more challenges than I've ever had before, but I'm proud I've been able to do that. And it's something I'm going to have to continue to do and I'm going to have to continue to challenge and improve upon. But at the end of the day, this is where like fit, healthy and happy. Me and Kyle are so passionate about practicing what we're preaching here and really living that life. And we're not perfect. We make a lot of mistakes. There's things that'll throw us off. And at the end of the day, we keep getting up, we get after it. And that's where we can have a lot of success. And that's where you can as well as a listener. It just takes doing that self work to get over that and to reach that next milestone. Yeah. And like the thing is when Josh was listing off those, those, you know, different reasons, those different excuses that people come up with, like there will always be something if you look for it. I know we talk about it, but it's just, it's so easy. Like I just, I really want to get across to some of you, whether you're a parent, whether you have busy hours, like just put, push that aside. And even just what's so inspiring about coach Josh is like, ever since he had, you know, the young one, he's been so dialed in. I'm like, I cannot believe this. Like he was always dialed in beforehand, his routine, his schedule, even after, you know, living with this guy and seeing just his habits and everything like that. I'm like, 
there's a reason this guy's successful. There's a reason, you know, he's able to just be fit, healthy, happy, embody that lifestyle. And it's just, it's super inspiring because like there's never an excuse. And I think that's so just awesome because it's like, it's so easy to be like, I had a horrible sleep. Like even we talk about that, Josh and I are saying like, yeah, it's easy to have horrible sleeps, puppies, kids, whatever the situation is, but you're doing no good by just consistently thinking about it, by talking about it, by telling everyone about it. At the end of the day, do what you need to do. Keep showing up. You know, Josh is going to continue to just, uh, you know, um, just push that barrier of just like people saying, oh, I get a dad bod, you know, this and that. That's no excuse. You know, at the end of the day, this guy's like the best shape possible. So I just thought that was inspiring. I want to give him a shout out for showing up, for being great at what he does. Just podcast every single day, doesn't miss a workout, takes care of all his clients, everything that needs to be done. So yeah, I just wanted to share that today. And that's all I have to say there. Yeah. These things take time. I was reflecting on it a lot too. Like you don't just get this way overnight. Obviously this is our life it's a lot easier for it to be at our forefront and our focus because we are coaching people we're living it but it took a lot of work there's a lot of things behind the scenes back in the day in university we used to take the time to like still make sure to upload these videos have a business plan we do personal challenges like personal finance challenges minimization or minimalism challenges rather we would also read books challenge each other to read more books and self-growth and try to improve our knowledge base for everything and it's just something that continually takes time but the more you do it like i said the easier it gets the more it becomes normal to you the more it can excite you and yeah we're just really passionate on it so i i really hope everyone tries to apply this to their life i know once again there's a million things and it just it's so easy to have excuses because there are valid excuses but at the end of the day when we validate them, we don't get progress and that excuse just becomes the outcome. But when you look how you can get past that, uh, that excuse, then it, you can get a result. You can have a lot of success. So we're really passionate there. We hope that helped everyone. And now we're going to jump into our client shout out. And that is my client, Victoria. So I worked with Victoria for well over, I believe a year to two years, which is absolutely fantastic. And seeing her complete journey of coming in, just wanting to get fit and healthy to doing that, to being insanely strong, to crushing and winning her first bikini comp. It's amazing to see what you're capable of. And I'm sure Victoria at the start, if I showed her photos and said, this is going to be you in the future, she'd be like, no way, there's not a chance. But once you start to do that work, you get a little bit better, like massive progress is achieved by small compounding consistent efforts and just improving and having the attitude to be better. And it's been incredible seeing her continue to be fit, to be healthy, to be happy. And at the end of the day, I really want to implore everyone that they have the ability to do all of those, to have a ton of success that most people I think have no conception of what they're capable of. And I love coaching people through that and having that light bulb go off in their mind with like, Oh my goodness, I look amazing. Like, I'm such a fit person. Like I could be on like a magazine or something, or I'm so strong or, Hey, I can do a comp and I can win a comp. Like your potential is limitless or getting super famous on Instagram, whatever it is. And at the end of the day, it's not always about that outcome or the validation for others. But I think a lot of people don't even see that as something they could do. They're like, I've always been out of shape. I've never been attractive, whatever it is. But you'd be amazed when you just put some effort into bettering yourself and improving and if you're already listening to this podcast you're capable of it you can absolutely achieve it so don't count yourself out the moral of the story of everything we said is self-belief consistent effort and getting up when you fall down i love that and you know just victoria is an amazing example of someone who just consistently crushed it and that's why our biggest thing is like we want you to be able to experience real results like not just results where you lose a pound or two, you start to feel a bit better, but like results where it's like life changing, your habits change, your lifestyle changes, the person you are changes and you look back and you're like, holy, I am set up for the rest of my life. And that's what's so awesome, once again, about what we do is we take a 360 look at every single thing that you do within your journey. The nutritional side of things, the training side of things, and then we help you with accountability. We do weekly check-ins, video one-on-one, -on -one, which is super awesome, through our awesome you know, systems that we have in place that we've, be, we've been perfecting over the last 10 years. So it's been tried and true, well over 3,000 transformations, over 3,500 now, which is super awesome. If you are looking to just get results for the next year, for the rest of your life and just start to feel your best, have all these amazing habits, send us that message with the keyword real results on our Instagram at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. And we will take care of you and be there for you every single step of the way. I promise you that. Yeah. Like even more than like what we've done, there's people, as I've mentioned, that are gone through 10 times more than I could ever comprehend that we've continued to help get results and help them unlock their full potential, whether it's being a single mother of multiple children, whether it's having something really horrible happen in your life or for people that are already doing good that just want to do better that want to achieve everything they can they want to leave nothing on the table they want to get out and get after it you can definitely achieve this and having a coach 
the biggest thing is believing in yourself to say, hey, I need support, I need accountability, and that's gonna help me grow and do better because every single person should have a coach. Myself and Kyle, whenever we can learn or be coached or be inspired by someone, we take that advantage, we put our money where our mouth is. And if you haven't done that in yourself and you're not seeing the results you want or you don't have the mindset or you are someone who is crutching on your excuses right now and you wanna overcome that, reach out to us, let's work on that one-on-one. -on -one. You literally are working with us. Uh, once again, you get unlimited questions, you get unlimited form checks. We do a weekly video check-in, so it doesn't need to be live. If you have a busy schedule, that's okay. We use an app called Marco Polo where we send a video back and forth. You can watch it live or you can watch it after answering questions and we give personalized feedback. If you like this general advice of the podcast, imagine every single week having Kyle look over your macros, looking over your workout intensities, your energy levels, making intelligent changes to your programs, your lifestyle, your direction, you are going to be unstoppable. So this is your chance. DM us on Instagram saying real results to at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. Now let's jump into the mailbag and answer some of your questions. And we have killer questions today. So I'm pumped to get into it. So the first question I got quite a lot when I posted an AMA on my Instagram is what is your body fat and what's the best way to calculate body fat? So to the answer of what my body fat is, I have no idea. If you Google like body fat percentages for men or body fat percentages for women, you can get an idea kind of other general ranges of what it would look like. Now, this isn't a perfect science here and people love that body fat. Now I'm like, wait a second, what do you mean you don't know? Your scale should tell you. The scale uses, once again, it's like electro, whatever. They use like a little stem through your body to detect like how hydrated you are, I believe, relative to your weight your height and it'll kind of just have a guess from that. But those things can be way off. I've had a deck set where I was like 15% and the scale will say I'm like 22% or 25% or something crazy. Especially when you're heavier, the numbers get really skewed. And if you're really light, the numbers get really skewed. So people will put too much sock into those scales. What the scales are good for is being consistently inaccurate to themselves. So if I'm 25 and I start going up to 30, I can confidently say I've gained body fat. If I start going down, I know I'm moving in the right direction, but then you'll say, hey, well, that's probably not much different than your weight, and that's probably what I would respond to. I don't find that is the best metric. My favorite metric, I do my measurements every single month. I actually did today. Today, we're recording this on the first, uh, so I did this uh, actually this morning, and I was able to see that I'm progressing in the key metrics I want to. I personally do my waist, I do my arm, my leg, my shoulders, and now I'm doing my calf as well because that's something I put a lot of effort. Well, I will be putting more and more effort into growing and improving because I see that as a weak spot and I'm trying to just get stronger and better. So for me, that's a great opportunity for me to see, are these moving in the right direction? And one month if I weigh in or if I do my measurements and they're all in the wrong direction, I'm not going to cry about it and say I'm a piece of garbage and quit everything. And so I'm going to say, Ooh, you know, I got a little bit loose. I got a little bit slack time to tighten up. And that's like an accountability mechanism for me. It's like a fail safe in a car. Like if your car needs service, you get the little engine check engine light. You got to go and get that fixed. And that's where these can be really good tools or weighing in every single day. Those are metrics. I prefer a lot more to body fat, the best body fat, thing I've done. Calipers are okay, but I find you can always manipulate like how tight you grab the fat. It's a little bit complicated, but like just doing a DEXA is a really good metric. But even that, if I take my whole huge thing of water and I chug it, it logs your water inside of you as muscle mass. So you can skew the results. And a lot of people will say, well, just don't drink water. But case in point, you get how technical body fat can be. And like at the end of the day, no, no girl is going to go up to a guy at the bar and go, what's your body fat? Like, I, I mean, at least I hope not. I mean, I mean, I don't know what people are into, but I don't really see that being a thing. And that's what I've always said about weight too. Weight is just a tool. Like People get so upset, like I know, especially women, if they're over 200 pounds, like, listen, you look freaking phenomenal. You got a flat stomach. You like, you're in amazing shape. You're just tall. Like it doesn't matter. No one's going to be like, oh, you're 200 pounds. Like we get in our own head about these things. And then I know a lot of men too. They'll be like, I don't want to ever be under 140 pounds. And it's like, well, if you look fantastic, who freaking cares? And at the end of the day, that's where we shouldn't put too many stocks into these numbers. Another great metric is how you look. So are you getting new veins? What's your ab visibility like? What's your, how do your clothes fit? All these different metrics are what I concern myself with more personally. So I honestly have no idea what body fat I am. I could guess. And once again, my guess probably wouldn't be great. I'd guess like 12%. And what's the stock in that? I don't know. Like a lot of people will just love to put up random numbers. Um, but yeah, that's my spiel on uh, body fat. It's funny how like common of a question this is when it's, it's one of those things that like Josh said, it's just, 
it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Like if he's posting a photo looking jacked, you know, abs are shredded or whatever, like whether he's like nine, 10, 11, 12, like it doesn't make a big difference. And even for myself, like I just, I really do like using progress photos or just simply looking in the mirror like once a day to see what's going on, especially as I'm lean bulking and trying to put on some muscle. And of course I will put on a little bit of fat, it's very important for me to see what's going on there to take those measurements as well. But especially like, like Josh said, those photos, being able to just like essentially look at yourself, of course, where it does get tough. And this is where it is great to have like an extra eye or an extra pair of eyes, I guess you could say, is that when you do look at yourself and you take your own photos and you compare it your, yourself, you can become so emotionally attached to those results, to that entire thing. So that's why once again, having a coach, having someone outside of that emotional attachment, be able to say like, even for us, we do get these monthly photos from all our clients, we're able to put them side by side and say, okay, you know, the back's growing here, you know, it looks like the abs are tightening up here. Okay, cool. You know, you see the glutes growing, like whatever it is that you're focused on. That's what's so cool about this entire journey, especially the one-on-one -on -one perspective. But uh, yeah, that's all I really had to add there. Nothing crazy. And uh, uh, Josh crushed it with his answer there. Yeah. So quality for most people with accuracy of body fat, I'd say Dex is probably the best metric we have. That's like you can get as a consumer. So Dex scan, you go, it's like a hundred bucks. It's actually like they test it, I think for bone density so you get a lot of other metrics as well so maybe doing that once a year is a really cool way to kind of gauge where your physique's at and see your symmetries and you get a whole report which is pretty cool above that i'd say is probably like a bod pod those are pretty good but they're a little bit less accurate i know a lot of gyms will offer that for free so that's pretty cool if you can take advantage of that then i'd probably say body fat calendars then i uh, calipers sorry then i'd say a scale in terms of reliability for actual body fat and then lastly i would say just like a calculator online where you put in your stats and kind of get after it there so not my favorite metric if you like to use it cool power to you uh, i just wanted to voice kind of why i'm not huge on it uh, now we're going to jump into number two and i know kyle's going to pop off on this one so i'll hand it off to him so the question is what are some great low calorie and healthy comfort foods yeah this is awesome especially because yeah we've been you know living in this airbnb the content house we like to call it and uh just been finding different fun things here in the US and just experimenting. And it's been really awesome, especially because for those of you who know, I am a sweets person. I do enjoy, you know, anything sweets related, but I'm not the type of person that wants to be having, you know, Ben and Jerry's every night or just like throwing away and just having endless sugar and, you know, just going over calories for no reason, that type of stuff. Right. So it is really great to have those like things in the house, you know, just in different cupboards, like you go to open the fridge or whatever, you're trying to find something if you had a long day and then all you see is great stuff. You see these fun things, some higher protein things. So long story short, we've done a lot of different quest chips here, which is super awesome. Uh, we can confidently say that the barbecue flavor is definitely our favorite. We really enjoyed that and we're, it's unfortunate that we found it near the end of this trip, but we'll definitely, you know, just keep getting that when we can. Um, Skinny Pop is a great option. Now, one thing I will say is you'll always be better off if you are looking to get these things and keep it in your house, like having the smaller packages. So if you just get one of those massive bags, you'll probably have a bag. If you get those mini ones where it's like 80 to 100 calories or whatever it is, you'll probably have one, right? So it is something to think about and that's where I think a lot of people struggle is they don't realize that, you know, just portions make a difference. And that's why even for me personally, if I ever do want to bring those types of snacks, I will get the bag. Um, Josh loves the que uh, the, que the Quest Reese uh, butter cups, right? Or peanut butter cups or whatever yeah, they're called. Yeah, I find they're really, like they, they're not as good as actual Reese cups. But once you get like, you have a few bites of it, I find I really like it. Like there's a slight protein pay taste. And a lot of these things will have a little bit of a protein taste, some worse than others. But I'm amazed at how far things have come. Like Quest bars used to be the tastiest thing to me. Now I think they're absolutely disgusting in my personal opinion. And keep in mind, just because I say that doesn't mean you won't love things. I find protein snacks in general are so personal. Like someone will love something, someone will hate another. And even there's like a premier protein cereal and like one YouTuber said it was horrible and Kyle's like, I probably won't like it. Then Kyle tried it and he liked it. And like, at the end of the day, it's fun trying all these different things. And we've even noticed what's really cool is as fitness is becoming more popular, as lifting is more popular, there's a lot more consumer packaged protein items that you can get. Like the variety out there is so much more than it used to be, which is really cool. And that's something uh, we've really been enjoying. But anyways, you can continue on there. Yeah, and keep in mind, like we wanna always be aiming for like, healthy whole foods, all that other stuff. So what I'm listing, cause I don't want people to go out there and be like, oh, I'm having all these things and you know, just like it's super expensive and then I'm having four or five of these a day, these right? These are the so, savory hacks. Yeah, the PM the, comes around. Yeah. 
it's fun. You, you want something like that. Even my clients said every day, I just want chips or something at three. I'm not even that hungry. I just want something fun. I'm like, try the quest chips and you're getting 20 grams of protein. Essentially. It's like 120, 140 calories, something like that. Like it can really scratch that itch for you and it can be a lot of fun. And now am I saying only eat protein foods that are probably pretty processed all day? Absolutely not. But at the end of the day, injecting them in your day, it's way better. What's a quest motto they have on all the bags that you really love. I, it's something that, it's something along the lines of foods you love that are actually good for you or taking whatever it is. Their, their whole point is they're taking things that are unhealthy and making them healthy. Oh, it's making food work for you, not against you. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what it is. And I thought that was so cool because the fact that I can have like Reese's cups, I could have chips. I could, like I get a couple of really, they even have these little cheese crackers for quests. We're not sponsored, but I've been pretty impressed with them. So yeah. they're going to get a free plug here. Uh, yeah. but those are just tools we've been loving. And I found it's really makes dieting easy too. When you have something tasty to look forward to, you're not just like, Oh, I'm just pounding chicken, broccoli and rice all day. Yeah. And, uh, it's funny. Yeah. We were in target and we we're just like, man, we haven't heard of them in like a while. And we're like, this is impressive. Like all this stuff, but even just for us, like we tried some Yasso bars, which is pretty cool. I know some people like the skinny cow ice cream. So anywhere between like 80 to 150 calories, even Josh pointed out that the Yasso bars are, uh, Greek yogurt, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also rice cakes. You know, if you have one of those, it's 40 calories. It can fill you up. It can give you that satisfaction of potentially having chips, right? And that's another thing is crispy minis. Those are some things that I like to keep in the house here and there, which are just a better option. And I find that you don't want to kind of binge it as if you were to just open up a bag of, um, of chips, it's easier to just have the whole thing. Whereas crispy minis, you kind of stop after a bit. Tangerines have been my new favorite thing. So Josh challenged me a while ago to cut out the sparkling waters, the diet pops, this and that. And we bought some uh, tangerines and I just been having one every afternoon for 40 calories. It's healthy. It's in line with my goals and it's been super awesome. And then by accident, I found out that I absolutely love frozen fruit. So I bought like a massive thing. There's about three kilograms of frozen fruit at the start of the trip. The blender here at the Airbnb didn't work. And then, so at the end of each night, I would just put together like a little bowl. It was like probably 50 to 75 calories. And I was just having that. And it just, it felt so good. You know, especially in the hot environment, I was like, man, this is cool. How how like, you know, just you can have these things and, and it's still being great for your health and you get that satisfaction if you happen to have a sweet tooth or you just need that extra little thing. And the last thing I was going to say is Halo Top is pretty cool. There's a lot of different things out there. Um, for me personally, I find it's like pretty cool because it's 10 grams of protein for 160 calories and not saying that I'll never have Ben and Jerry's, but if I do want something like this and I can have 160 calories, some good protein versus like 800 calories and just like same sort of stuff and it gives you that same sort of satisfaction, it's you know, it's just, it's good to keep these things on the top of your head. So I'm just going to leave that there. Some things to think about. We do have a suggested food list for every single client that signs up. We have so many different resources, a form guide, a suggested food list, 52 recipes, high protein for every single person, as well as an eating out guide, which gets sent to you all completely free, included within any person that signs up for coaching. So just something to think about. We give you unlimited resources to help you succeed no matter what. Make sure to send us a message, real results. You'll get that included. And uh, yeah, that's all I got to say there. And I just finished making a new supplement guide and that's only going to be for clients for now. And once again, we're breaking down what does what and what's worth taking for your budget, your expertise, whatever it is. You know, we're not crazy on supplements, but there's definitely a few unique supplements in there that I've really been enjoying that I think I think everyone will get a lot of merit from checking out. And once again, that is only available for clients. And our goal is to give a ton of resources to over promise, over deliver, but also give that one on one help because we care. It's a very personal journey. We're very actively involved in making sure you succeed, helping you overcome any obstacle that's in your way. And at the end of the day, we're here to give you every opportunity and avenue for success, whether it's resources, personal time, uh, direction, whatever it is, we're going to be there for you. So we can't wait to help out a few more of you that believe in yourself enough to make that investment because you are worth it. Once again, you can DM us real results on Instagram to act Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. Now for the final question of the day, we have what is the hardest part of fitness for you? This is a really good question. And once again, I got asked this on and ask me anything, which we do uh, two times a week. Make sure you're following us on Instagram. We answer questions consistently on top of everything we do for the podcast here. Instagram is Colossus Fit. But long answer short, like my right now, I'm going to have to say there's not a whole lot that's hard. And I'm, I'm not saying this to brag, but more so to give you guys a realization that 
it can be simple, like fitness, getting abs, you know, just building muscle, no matter what your situation is, you can do this. And for example, if you asked me this question 10 years ago, I'd list off about 20 different things. You know, I had no idea what I was doing. My nutrition was all over the place. I was following a bodybuilding.com nutrition guide that didn't work for me. I had no idea about programming. My answer would be different. 10 years from now, it'll probably also be different. I'll probably have different obstacles. I'll still make it work. But long story short is that we can help simplify the process. Like for me personally, day to day, I know my macros. I plug it into the spreadsheet that we utilize. Um, I've studied form over the last few years. Once again, something we help every single client with as well. And in terms of just like the actual workout routine, it's great because, you know, we use our Colossus programs that we created custom for us. You know, Josh put together some cool stuff for me as well, which I really appreciate. But the reason it's easy is because everything is there in front of me. I don't have to second guess things. I know what my cardio is gonna be like. I have the habits in place. And I just wanted to share this with you because for a lot of you, of course, fitness isn't the main thing. You have a lot of other things going on, but I genuinely believe the thing that can help you just struggle less and like for you to be able to answer and say, it's pretty simple. I just show up is having that guidance and like knowing exactly what it is. If you wake up each day wondering what time am I going to work out, which body parts, like it's not even a question. Like Josh and I, the car leaves at 9, 10, we head to the gym. Like it's, we have the same program in, we don't change things up a ton unless we need to. And that's what I wanted to share with you above like answering this question and say it's pretty simple is just having the structure, having the guidance, like not having to just think of the million things to do and you know, just you think of your macros and try to calculate it while trying to do a bunch of things. That's why once again, we will take care of you. Please send us that message. We're looking for three motivated individuals to get the results they deserve for the rest of their life. So send us that message and we will take care of you. We've worked hard to make it easy for you. We put in our 10,000 hours, we've grinded, we've researched, we've made the mistakes, we've had the successes, we've worked with thousands of individuals, and now we wanna make it as easy for you to see your best results possible. So don't miss out on this. Definitely be sure to take advantage of that offer, and we wanna thank everyone for tuning in today. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Implement this knowledge, get after it. The world is at your fingertips. You have a limitless potential, get out there, make it happen.